If you're a data scientist or learning to become one, then Pandas must be the first library that you import at the start of any project. I've been using it for years and picked up some non-obvious yet very useful features that are often overlooked by junior developers. Let's start by importing the corrupt file. So just a plain read CSV may throw an error if the file is corrupt and as you can see down here parse error, error tokenizing data, expected 1 fields and line 3 so 11. I'm sure you've seen this many times and went over to open the data set in Excel trying to find where the problem is and fix that manually and then import it back into Python. But instead Instead, you can just add an extra one argument to the read CSV function on bed lines equals skip and read in the data set with this argument. This will read the data emitting the lines where the error previously occurred and it will potentially save you a lot of time. And this one little argument saved me so much hustle that I had to go over looking for this error manually within the data file. Next up is getting an index of a maximum or minimum value within one column. You might be tempted to look up the maximum value in the column then subset a data frame on this value in this column and get the index. Instead, you can just do this data frame column name idx max and it will give you that same index of the maximum value in this column or idx min will show you the index of the minimum value within the column now what about filtering your data frame by n smallest or largest values within a certain column? So you want to see three records of your data with the highest h. It's a very simple syntax. You just pass to the data frame n smallest method the n, the number of values that you want to subset the data frame by, and the column name in which you want to find those smallest values. And just like so, you can filter your data frame by the three smallest values in the h column. And if you want to see the n largest, you just change the method name from n smallest to n largest. And now you will see the subset of your data frame with the three largest values according to the h column. Now how about filtering the data frame from records with a certain value in a certain column? Here we have a simple data frame, let's have a look. It's got lots of zeros in the x column from index 0 to 6. Here's what we do, df column x n e 0. This will create a mask showing false in all the lines where the desired value is. Let's call this mask. Now if you want to get rid of all these records from the data frame, then you need to just subset the data frame using this mask. And here you have it, you have that new data frame without the zero values in the X columns. At this point I remember years of my previous work with Pandas where I had to do all these little things over and over again and every one of them was done with multiple different steps. And I'm sure you can relate to this. Now notice how much faster and more efficient it becomes when you know certain Pandas capabilities. Okay, next up is a quick split of your data into train and test sets. Previously, for just about any split, I would import train test split from scikit-learn model selection to do this. This is a totally valid option, especially given the configurability of the split. But I find myself using a simple two-liner much more often recently, just because it's less typing. So you just get a sample of your data frame indicating a fraction, then for the test set, use all that is left in your data except for the indexes that went into the train set. I'm sure all of you know what value count does. I use it all the time to check the distribution of the categorical variables, but raw count of each category sometimes doesn't give you a clear picture, especially if there are quite a few categories. To get better understanding of the distributions, you might want to see the percentages of occurrences of the values within the column. So just by adding the normalize equals true argument to the value counts function, you will see those percentages. After having learned this, never have I used the value counts function without this argument. The last two tricks present your data frame in a different format. With the pandas to markdown function, you can print your data frame in a markdown format. This may come in handy for quick prints to the console inside your program when it's running to indicate something in the log. And the next one saves your data frame in the HTML format, which can be rendered by any browser. Now for this purpose you need to install a third-party library, LXML, import it, and then you just convert it to HTML format like so, and then you just save it to whatever location and you can send it over the email and anybody with a browser can open this. Now the data can be shared with those who don't have any other means for opening the data. These have been my tips for today. I hope you liked it and stay tuned for more.